Hi, Mark Gelfo. It's a Wednesday of Greenbuild, and I just came out of a really great session on uh, Lighting Insider's View to Lead Version Four. Well, I thought it was a really great session, but I'm, you know, I'm a lighting nerd and uh, uh, trying to learn as much, uh, get as much information about Lead Version Four um, as I can here at Greenbuild. So, um, specifically focused on on lighting. First, I started talking a little bit about energy. Um, Obviously, lead version 4, the biggest thing energy-wise is it adopts the newest version of ASHRAE 90.1, 90.1 2010, uh, which um, lowers almost across the board the lighting power densities that are allowed uh, for projects, somewhere between 12 to 15 percent uh, reduction in, in LPDs, so that uh, uh, to get below baseline, uh, we're going to have to do some different things and, and be a little more stringent on our requirements uh, than in previous projects uh, through things that, that I've been saying for, for quite a while, right-sizing uh, the lighting, uh, set your lighting power density goals and then sticking to them, uh, picking efficient uh, fixtures and luminaires with high efficacy. Uh, they made the point specifically that linear fluorescence and LEDs uh, are going to be what you're going to need to specify. Compact fluorescents certainly have their place. Um, but uh, nothing beats efficacy for uh, uh, than LEDs and uh, some of the linear fluorescence. Using task ambient approaches and uh, intuitive, easy to use lighting controls. That's how we're going to save energy. So relative to lead version four credits, uh, they talked about the new daylighting credits um, to talk about um, improving glare control and the different uh, different options to meet the daylighting credits in lead version 4. The prescriptive path is is no more. Now there's two different uh, daylighting simulation modeling options. Uh, the first one uses a combination of annual sunlight exposure, which is really a glare control measure, and uh, spatial daylighting autonomy, uh, which measures how much usable light you're really getting into the space. Um, that's really the best option to use. And then of course Besides the two modeling options, you can do uh, measurement, go out in the space after it's built and measure how much daylighting you get. Uh, there's new interior lighting credit, which really has two pieces. The first piece is lighting control, which is very similar to uh, the previous controllability of systems credits that we're familiar with in LEED 2009. Uh, the only difference there is now there's a mid-level lighting requirement, so for an office to meet the control the control requirement it needs to have a kind of a middle uh, type of level not just uh, on off the other part of the interior lighting credit then is lighting quality and without getting into too much details there's basically eight strategies uh, to that uh, quant quantifiable qual uh, yeah, qualitative um, I'm sorry prescriptive uh, strategies and you have to pick four of them uh, to meet the lighting quality credit. And then a lot of time talking about uh, the famous light pollution reduction credit, uh, formerly SS Credit 8, it'll now be SS Credit 6. Um, the credit has gotten a lot simpler, a lot easier. Uh, a lot of the complaints before were that you know you could do a good environmentally friendly lighting design and through some quirk of the, of the, the requirements of the credit, um, not get it, not get that point, uh, and it was a lot of effort uh, looking at both interior and uh, uh, detailed lighting calculations to, to meet the credit. So, um, no more interior lighting requirements for the light pollution reduction credit. Um, there still is the, the measurement uh, where you can do the calculations and measure your light levels at the, uh, at the boundary, but the boundary has changed. So, rather than it having to be the lead boundary, we can define the lighting boundary to be the property line with some minor modifications um, that are actually help you um, a little less restrictive. Um, so the lighting boundary does not is not the lead boundary. They're two different things now. Um, and then of course there is the prescriptive method of uh, of the bug calculations: backlighting, uplighting, and glare. And that basically is you know for each fixture each site lighting fixture, they have B, U, and G ratings, and depending on what lighting zone you're in, the fixture has to, has to have a certain B, U, and G ratings, uh, and be, or be less than that. And then the way to the lighting zones have been, uh, have been redefined so that they're um, a lot clearer, 
um, and not, not uh, clarified and simplified. So there's not going to be as much question as to what lighting zone you're in. So overall, that is going to get a lot easier. So a lot of good lighting stuff, and on to the next session.